<laughs> Good evening, everyone. This is the Easter Art Union Free School District Board of Education meeting for Wednesday, April 19th, 2023. Please join me in the pledge. May have a motion to enter executive session to discuss matters related to five particular students and one and one particular employee. So moved by Mr. Cassidy. Second by Mr. Flowers. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Hi. Hi. Thank you for your patience. The board is returning from executive session and a recess for CPR training. Uh, in executive session, we discussed matters relating to five particular students, one particular employee. Moving on to item three, no agenda changes. Nope. No, on item four, no reports or discussion items right now. Uh, items requiring board action. Mr. Russ. Yeah. Um, so I'd just like to uh, congratulate uh, our teachers who are here with us tonight who will be receiving tenure. Um, I think we have seven or eight and uh, what happened was we came out of uh, the application adjustment and we laid off a lot of people we had to cut a lot of programs. So this was a year when we could rehire people and um, and and reestablish our programs and I have to say that, that the group that's here tonight has done an incredible job restoring those things and we couldn't be more proud of your work and grateful that you're on our team and I'll be quite honest it's not hard it, it is hard to achieve tenure in, in East Aurora because we have high expectations for all of our employees and so I'm just thrilled that we can be here today and celebrate and we'll also do a little bit of celebration in September when you are official because you know you have to walk through the door in September to officially get your tenure but we're going to celebrate tonight afterwards with, with some cupcakes as well so again, congratulations to all of you and now we're going to announce you one at a time item a the superintendent recommends the board of education grant tenure to courtney brown 1.0 fte birth to kindergarten grade six elementary education teacher as detailed in your agenda may i have a motion so moved moved by mr cassidy seconded by mrs Daniel. discussion all those in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed abstentions carried six zero congratulations Superintendent recommends that the Board of Education grant tenure to Joshua Dubé, 1.0 FTE Math 7 to 12 teacher, as detailed in your agenda. May I have a motion? Move. Moved by Mr. Flowers. Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Brunson. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion <laughs> carried 6 0. Congratulations. <laughs> Item C. Yeah. The superintendent recommends that the Board of Education grant tenure to Emily Krause, 1.0 FTE Special Education Teacher, as detailed in your agenda. May I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Danu. Second by Mr. Cassidy. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Carried 6 0. Congratulations. <laughs> Item D, the superintendent recommends that the Board of Education grant tenure to Tana Moran, 1.0 FTE special education teacher, as detailed in your agenda. May I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Second. Mrs. Zaproda, seconded by Mr. Flowers. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motions? Carried 6 Item E, the superintendent recommends the Board of Education grant tenure to Laura Bradley, 1.0 FTE special education teacher, as detailed in your agenda. May I have a motion? So moved. Moved, moved by Mrs. Daniel, seconded by Mr. Cassidy. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Carried 6 0. Item F, the superintendent recommends that the Board of Education grant tenure to Casey's LP, 1.0 FTE, elementary education K-6 teacher, as detailed in your agenda. May I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Mr. Flowers. Seconded by Mr. Brunson. Discussion? 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Carried 6 0. <laughs> Item G. The superintendent recommends that the Board of Education grant tenure to Christina 25, 1.0 FTE, so school social worker, as detailed in your agenda. We have a motion. So moved. Moved by Mr. Cassidy. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Daniel. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Carried 6 0. Congratulations. <laughs> fun we ever have. <laughs> <laughs> Item H. The superintendent recommends that the Board of Education grant tenure to Aaron Wilcox 1.0 FTE school counselor as detailed in your agenda. I have a motion. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Improta. Second? Second. Seconded by Mrs. Daniel. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Carried 6-0. all of our tenure candidates. This is a very exciting day and we would like to give you all cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> so can we, I'll just come on over here and we'll just go over here. Yo, put it here. I always wonder if it's like it's phasing itself naturally. Yeah. Good job, guys. Good job. That's all the things. Okay. Yeah. Not yet. Did you run the lock? No. Voice. Very expensive. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Cupcakes. Okay. <laughs> 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 Notice best that we did it. We made it as hard for you as possible to get all those, all those uh, motions because we could have just decided who was going to who was going to move and who was going to second on each one. <laughs> you wouldn't have managed to scramble. <laughs> Congratulations, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank we of course we always say cake because but now it's all of the way we want to share the cupcakes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 It's got like the white inside. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. god. It's so creepy. It's good. I'm gonna start drilling like my dog over here. <laughs> 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 
Now they're all sugared up. Thank you. We're moving on to item six, superintendent's comments. Yes. Um, so I just would like to share uh, this, this past weekend, um, I had the opportunity to go to Huntsville um, uh, for this uh, rocketry um, team was selected by NASA. Uh, to participate in this uh, nationwide uh, challenge, and so, um, so we've got it. Uh, okay, so I don't mind. 
Let me just try to think how big it is. So we have we have this uh, a rocket tree club who participated in the national competition. Last year they finished in the top 25, which allowed them to be selected to work with NASA. So they have to be extensive process of a 60 day of application and a lot of other factors to get selected, and they were. So we're one of 13 high schools across the country that was selected to participate. And the um, the actual launch was this Saturday in Missoula, Alabama. I had the good fortune to um, attend, and we have some here that were, were there and have worked on this rocket. And what's so amazing about it, there's definitely been some ups and downs in the process. And at one point when they are testing the rocket, it actually crashed and had to be rebuilt. There were other, uh, other things that happened along the way that set them back, but they did not give up. And even on the morning of the launch itself, they were preparing the rocket, and they realized that some of the lenses were missing. And so they took the rocket apart right there and then under our tent put it back together and they had this amazing launch it was just incredible uh, and so what I'd like to do now is show you some of the video from Saturday. So, um, this one is the launch and it's actually the so now that's what will happen. The stage is to bring the rock get back down to the ground. So I think of the mound area. I'll wait till it's uh, is that true? Yeah. It's spinning. I see it. I see it. It's spinning. Oh, you got a parachute to a nice little twin. You might lose it a little bit. You see it? Don't blink. You see it. It's going to land right now. No, maybe it's not going to land right now. It's going to land close. It's going to be close, yeah. That drogue is so slow. It was a lot faster last time. Yeah, it was. What do you mean? I said There it is. There you go. So here it is. You're descending. You can see the initial parachute. Nice oh, job, guys. Beautiful. So the C3L? Yeah. Perfect. So um, it was really uh, an incredible experience, and um, uh, the six members of the team worked incredibly hard for, gosh, almost 10 months. Uh, the process has been going on. They worked with an engineer from NASA, uh, a 35-year uh, veteran of NASA, who guided them through this process. Uh, and then they created this, this really amazing rocket that did exactly what they were hoping to do. So they set criteria, and you have to meet certain criteria for height, uh, how quickly it lands. They had infrared cameras in, in, in built inside the rocket itself. So all of those things have to be met in order for them to, to go through the process. And so they've just done an incredible job. And, and here's their interview at the end. The Naval Academy. Yeah. Now we have one of our high school teams here, East Aurora High School from New York. Come on in. How's everybody doing today? We're doing pretty good. Pretty pumped about that launch. That launch was amazing. Yeah, so tell us about that launch. I, I, it went, I can tell you're excited. It went well? Oh, yeah. It went perfect. Flawless. There was no issues at all. That doesn't often happen in rocketry. Uh, tell us about what this process has been like and, and challenges that, that brought you here. This process has been a lot of work. Trust me. We've Went through five full scale flights. This was actually our fifth right here. But our second full scale flight, we actually crashed into a tree at 285 miles an hour because the whole recovery system just didn't act properly. And then the third flight, uh, we only had two charges go off, and that was just the main parachute. So they didn't really like that. So our fourth flight was actually on Saturday, one week ago from today. And then we got approved to fly Monday. So it's been a hectic process. So determination and resiliency really kind of seems to be the, the motto of the team. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, we're a six-member team, first year, and we never gave up. We just kept pushing. Don't give up. 
That's awesome. So talk to us about your payload. How? What payload did you put in the rocket? So our payload is nicknamed Nirai 360. It's a near-infrared atmospheric imaging system in 360 degrees. So basically it visualizes infrared throughout the duration of the flight in 360 degrees and compares it to temperature, humidity, and pressure sensors that are located within the, the sensor bay. Oh, that's awesome. So last question for you guys, and I'm going to let you go celebrate. Anybody back home you want to say hi to, give a shout out to? <laughs> Basically everyone at this point, the whole town of East Aurora has always been supporting us. Uh, we've got Moog, they help sponsor us. The Educational Foundation, they help fund us. Uh, A.W. Miller, they help 3D print our nose cone. And there's so many other people that couldn't be here without them. Dr. Young, our first mentor, and then Vince, our second mentor. It's been a hectic process, but we pushed through, we made it, and we're so glad to be here. That's awesome. We're so glad to have you. So glad to see you. Big smiles on the faces to everyone in East Aurora and New York. Thank you so much for supporting the team. Oh, we truly appreciate it. And I know they do, too. Y'all can give a wave to Mom and Dad and everybody. That is East Aurora High School in New York. Thank you so much, y'all. Congratulations. So so it was really a really exciting day. And like you could see, um, they were explaining what they, the infrared system and how complicated it is. And I could not put the words together what that was because I didn't really understand it to be quite honest. But it was really impressive. And for them to compete against, and, and honestly, the main people that are there are colleges from across the university uh, that have teams of 30, 40, 50, and 60 students that put their rockets together. And, and our team did it with six. So uh, very, very impressive. So uh, again, congratulations. Uh, yeah, so I, I think that's it. All right, thank you. Uh, legislation? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, board presidents and board member comments. The um, policy committee meeting was last week, Tuesday, and you'll have you know, policies that we'll be reviewing later on. Anything else this evening? Um, just to report, we had a good turnout from our community, um, including lots of school age kids parents i mean we had every age um that came to our hands only cpr class downstairs so i really like to thank this new iraq for doing that and mr lombardo and mr roberts um and the board for supporting that it, it was a, a really really good turnout and a really lives are going to be saved because of that so thank you thank you for coordinating with the team <clears throat> Cassidy? Yeah, I want to echo the congratulations to the uh, the, the Rocket Club because I, we had it on in our house uh, so that we could watch it. Unfortunately, we missed the launch live, but then heard the interview and rushed in to <laughs> catch the interview, which, by the way, of all the interviews that I caught, maybe I'm biased, but it was the best interview. <laughs> um, uh, it, was, it was fantastic. And, uh, and yeah, just just to see them competing against some of the universities. Some of the universities didn't have such great turnouts. Uh, the outcomes weren't great for them. Uh, so uh, I think flawless is the word Thomas used. I, I'd say that's what they got. So that was great. Um, just uh, one other thing, I got a chance to go uh, last week to the uh, middle school talent show, uh, and I, I won't steal this thunder, but um, I'll say that it was, it, was, it was a great turnout, and it was really, uh, it was, it was a really great show. Um, and I, I would give special props to the three MCs um, because they, while they weren't part of the talent show, they did an awesome job. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Gaskin. Mr. Flowers? Nothing today. Thank you for being here. Mr. Brunson? Uh, yeah, a couple of things. Uh, the, the, we had a meeting of the facilities committee, uh, but uh, rather than report on it, we have an update coming up at, later in the agenda. So I'll comment at that time. Uh, the other thing is, uh, in, in addition to what you've seen here on the screen with the Rocket Club, uh, I'd like to, to uh, give a shout out to Moog for uh, providing a reception for the folks uh, uh, the the uh, the team uh, was it after the uh, the launch or before? It was before. So there were there were some pictures of uh, of that as well, and it was uh, I think uh, it's really great when a local business can be supportive, uh, uh, and of course the educational foundation as well. So it's, uh, it's a great job you've done. Thank you, Mr. Brunson. Mr. Flowers. Thank you. Uh, 
Ms. Daniel? No, nothing oh, to Can I mention one? I forgot. Um, also, for maybe some you'll mention it as well, but the Pops concert was held last week with the middle school and the high school. And it was, um, it was so much fun, but I don't think I've been to a concert where it, there was a standing ovation. That's how much fun that the audience had. So the students were just, every student that participated was excellent. And of course, your instruction was excellent as well. Thank you very much. Administrators comments? Are there any administrators who have anything to share this evening? Folks. We're just gearing up for our uh, author study that's coming up on uh, May 12th, uh, 11th and 12th. Uh, it's going to be a great week. We have a whole spirit week where we're going to be having crazy hair and pajamas on all in uh, honor of our uh, special visitor, Zachariah O'Hara. Each student is going to receive one of his hardcover books, courtesy of our wonderful, amazing, supportive PTO. So stay tuned. I'm sure it's going to be a great event. Thank you, Ms. Pantoja. That sounds like lots of fun at Parkdale. Thank you. Mr. Brown. So two things. Mr. Cassidy um, already mentioned it, but the talent show, I unfortunately wasn't there. But Mr. Librock explained to me how awesome it was, how the MCs were great. And I'm always impressed with how middle school age students can get on stage in front of hundreds of people and just have the courage to go out there and, and perform. So very proud of them, even though I wasn't there. And the reason why I wasn't there is I was with 37 of our 5th through 8th graders in Washington, D.C. for four days. And we took our student council. And I, I just wanted to thank Mrs. Cook and Mr. Dayton. The two of them are the student council um, leaders, and they just did an exceptional job of, of planning this trip. And Officer Longboat, who went with us, he was incredible. I think it was eye-opening for him to spend four days with 37 <laughs> adolescents, but he did a great job. And Mrs. Wardabender, our school psychologist, and Ms. Gibbons, our nurse, uh, we just had a, a really good time. But the most, in, the most incredible part of the trip for me was at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. We were there for the, the changing of the guards, and it's just an incredible experience if you've never been. But as we finished, we found out that an honor flight from Erie County, from Buffalo, sponsored by the Bills, was just pulling up. And so we happened to be there at the same time that they were getting off of their bus. And the coolest thing was our 37 students, without being asked or anything, ran right up to the bus. They started help, helping um, to pull the wheelchairs out from under the bus, get them set up for the veterans. And they shaked every single one of those 70-some veterans' hands and thanked them for their service. One of the gentlemen was 103 years old from World War II, and he was telling them stories and giving them advice on how to live to 103. <laughs> but the cool thing was, uh, Reed Ferguson from the Bills was there, and he was interacting with our kids, and he was great, having a great time. But it was neat for me to see how the focus was not about him and about you know some of the coaches that were there. It was all about the veterans and what they've done for our country and the, the time that they served, and really just to make it a memorable, or a memorable experience for both the veterans and for our 37 students. I really don't think that they will ever forget that moment the rest of their life. So it was pretty cool. Sounds amazing. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyone else? Mr. Roberts. Um, I just wanted to bring your attention. A number of our faculty members and students were recognized over the past couple of weeks. And, and the first one is, is really unique. Um, RIT, uh, Rochester Institute of Technology, selects um, outstanding undergraduate scholar award winners. So they're the top 1% of undergraduate students, and that's based on academic excellence, uh, giving back to their community, volunteer work, conducting research, and engaging in co-op or work experiences. Now, what I love about this award is those award winners are allowed to select and honor uh, one of their high school teachers who was an influence on them in their scholar or um, in their, their academic careers or um, professional careers. We had two East Aurora graduates who were selected for this. Uh, you might remember the names Catherine Jenshevsky and Emma Orr. What made it even more unique is they both selected our technology teacher, Ryan Wall. So 
the um, professor who leads this uh, award and scholarship um, ceremony said it was the first time ever that they've had two graduates from the same high school and recognizing and selecting the same teacher. So I thought a unique recognition, well-deserved recognition, not only for our graduates, but for Ryan Wall and the influence that he has had on, on, our, on our graduates. So that was number one. He's also the advisor for the yes. Rocket Rocket Gene Program. <laughs> the second thing I wanted to bring to your attention is the Chamber of Commerce had their 76th Business Recognition Award Ceremony a few weeks ago. And it was a, a, a night that was super special for East Aurora High School because we had one group uh, win an award and one individual win an award. The group was the Blue Devil Unified Club. They won the Civics Award uh, for all the work that they've done with Unified Basketball and with Unified Bowling. So they recognize <coughs> the advisors and students. Um, and again, want to just tell you, because two of them were just honored with tenure, uh, Laura Radley and Emily Krause uh, were on stage being recognized, Mrs. Arnold, Mrs. Kavanaugh, and our SRO, Steve Cartwright. Uh, we also had some student representatives uh, to accept that award. The second award that night was the Educator of the Year Award, a prestigious award uh, that was given to this year Lisa Marchioli, our business teacher, uh, not only for her work with DECA and the evolution of the courses that were offered or are being offered at the high school, but uh, the introduction of the Devil Design this past year. So well-deserved recognition for all of those individuals. And then two final statements, I apologize. I want to thank the Educational Foundation. Um, they, last week, I think it was, Mr. Brunson, um, gave a substantial grant to uh, the high school through Mr. Hansen and Mr. Shelley and their sustainable agriculture program. So the foundation is going to allow us to start this program. We have many, many seniors who have already uh, enrolled in the class and now we have the funds to get that off the ground and, and we're super thankful to the foundation again for supporting uh, this new initiative. And then finally, the drama production is this weekend. Uh, Saturday and Sunday matinee, so if you're interested in seeing the talents, many of them sitting here uh, in front of me uh, this weekend at the high school, please uh, purchase a ticket and we'll show up at the door. Uh, Saturday night at 7 and Sunday at 2 o'clock. Thank you very much for sharing how that no visitors. Nope. Nope. We're good. We're good. There are. Thank you for getting your steps in. Appreciate that. Anyone else this evening? Thank you. I have no visitor comments. I will just remind the board that we received um, an actual snail mail letter from Mr. Lowry uh, requesting we consider voting for him in his um, candidacy for NISB. Got that? <laughs> Uh, moving on to item 11. Reports and discussion items, the 2023-2024 budget and property tax report card. Okay, uh, well, good evening, everybody. Thanks for being here with us today. Uh, this is hopefully the final proposal for the budget for the Here's the agenda. I won't go through it all, but these are all the things that we'll cover over the next uh, 20 minutes. <laughs> Again, you know, this process takes a long time. We basically start in the fall, uh, preparing um, for our budget vote in May. And again, what drives our decision making is our, our values and our vision, uh, learning excellence, respectful relationship, effective communication, and continuous improvement. And again, that was all based around the needs of our students um, and our staff as well. So a FEMA update, this really hasn't changed at all. We still, we've received $406,000 in FEMA reimbursements from things that happened during uh, the COVID era. Uh, we're still waiting on the distribution of meals and uh, that's in its second appeal and we haven't heard back. Uh, so reserve funding, and again, we've kept this on, um, on the agenda uh, since the beginning of the presentations because we're really required to keep it out front. 
uh, for the public as well as the board, uh, where we may place um, reserve funds if we have extra monies available. That'll be determined really over the summer. Um, and we've looked at uh, ERS and TRS, um, the liability reserve. We've also talked about using some money from technology to buy some new uh, Chromebooks. Uh, we use money also from the capital reserve uh, to fund this uh, latest uh, facilities project. Uh, so that'll probably be a place where we want to start to refund for, uh, to replenish for the next project as well. So the one house budgets, again, this hasn't changed a whole lot. We're still waiting. Uh, typically, we're shooting for April 1st uh, date for the budget to be passed, but here we are on uh, April 19th and still no notice. Uh, they are getting closer. There is some movement. We're hearing some bits and pieces, but nothing uh, significant. <clears throat> So here are the issues, again, still public safety and bail reform, uh, acceleration of payments to public hospitals, uh, New York Housing Compact, and then universal school meals. For us, the, the only thing that really impacts us is the universal school meal. We're really hoping that that moves through. There's a lot of support from the Senate and the Assembly, uh, but we're really hoping that that will uh, definitely give us a shot in the arm. Uh, again, budget neutral, like we go through the process and we, we identify costs and expenses and, and where the revenues are coming from. And sometimes we talk about things being neutral to the budget and there's different reasons for that. And this basically explains why something would be budget neutral. So these are these are some of the uh, circumstances, um, but it's, it's not an exact science. So uh, we try to give some, some parameters around that. So budget priorities, again, we've gone through this over the last several months. Um, uh, building subs will, we're going to use some of the federal uh, stimulus money to support those um, building subs in at Parkdale, the middle school, and the high school, but they are not included in the budget. So again, we're going to use that federal money for this year and see how the budget goes for next year. Uh, it's a big help because our, you know, our sub situation isn't great. It has improved. It certainly isn't great. And I know that the principals rely on the building subs every single day uh, to cover classes. Uh, here again, again, everything else has been moved over. Uh, we've made had discussions about all of these things over the last several months. Nothing's really changed. Uh, the SDL coordinator, again, we're going to move in the consultant direction uh, for the coming school year, so we're working out the details. Uh, uh, Ms. Lyons and I are working out the details with the, uh, with the consultants, and so we'll be moving over that hopefully uh, after July 1. So here we go, appropriations. Uh, when we look at uh, appropriations. We're going to talk a little bit about this because I've, I've received some information since the last time we um, we met, and I'd like to share some of that uh, with you at this time. Uh, but this hasn't changed since the last time we were together. Um, but I'm going to suggest a small change uh, because of some of the information that I recently received. And here's the revenue budget you can see in the projected lines for 23-24. Uh, it's 40 million. Forty-three million seven hundred fifty-two thousand seven hundred fifty uh, sixty-two dollars, and that aligns with the uh, projected appropriations of forty-three million seven hundred fifty-two thousand seven hundred sixty-two dollars. Um, so before we go, uh, let me just see where we are. Okay, so um, I, I received some information that we may have some changes to uh, uh, requirements around student services. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the levy. We set the levy um, at about 2.54 at the last meeting, and I'm going to talk to you about possibly adjusting that, um, um, uh, increasing the levy, actually, increasing the levy by about $50,000 to help us cover those costs. And so what would happen here is um, the uh, revenue and the appropriation budget would go from $43,752,000 to $43,802,762. So that would be the adjustment on the revenue side as well as the appropriation side. And again, that's to cover some unexpected costs we may have uh, with some, pro um, some program adjustments that are going to kind of come our way for the 23-24 budget. So again, that number there would now change from $43,752,762 um, to $43,802,762. Mm -hmm. Post capital outlay, again, this hasn't changed. We're looking at Parkdale. We got some good news on the replacement of the phone system. We're going to be able to save some money there. So that will allow us to do some of the additional concrete work that and camera work that we're hoping to do uh, as part of this project. Uh, the tax cap uh, levy uh, limit calculation, again. Um, so 
here it is. Uh, we said that we were going to set the limit, uh, the levy limit at 2.54. Uh, we're going to make an adjustment to the levy by $50,000. So it will be um, $26,283. Uh, and so that will go, this chart right here. Um, so we look at um, the tax levy uh, limit. We were at 3.13. Now we'll be uh, $100,000 under the cap, so the new uh, levy will be 2.74 under the proposal of, of adding that additional $50,000. So here's the tax rates. Um, Ms. George, you want to uh, talk about this at all? Um, they're estimated tax rates uh, based on going 150000 under the levy. So these will change again. Um, it's on the previous slide. Um, and they're just estimates um, because we don't have all the information we need to do tax rates until August. And so instead of being 13.04, it's going to be 13.07 uh, with the adjustment to the, to the tax levy. Mm -hmm. Again, so here's the projected budget. Currently, our budget is $41,296,498. Um, there's going to be an increase in the budget. Um, actually, it's going to be $2,506,264. The proposed um, uh, budget for uh, May 16th will be $43,802,762. Uh, if we kind of shoot to the bottom, um, the uh, Actually, the tax impact will line up full value houses about $32 and a house assessed at $100,000. That's what we've always used. Um, a house assessed at um, $100,000 will be a tax increase of $122 per year. So now that will be adjusted slightly because we've added additional $50,000 um, to uh, the levy. So um, do you have any idea? I would imagine it's a few dollars. I probably have it here somewhere. It's a few dollars. It's not a lot. Well, it was only three cents per thousand on, yeah. on the levy, so it's yeah. not a lot. It's not a lot, but it will adjust a little bit. So again, here we look at our fiscal accountability. Um, we look at uh, East Aurora, like what we're spending per pupil. They changed this formula. We talked a little bit about this in, in, in school year. They used to, to break out uh, general ed and special education. They don't do that any longer. But you can see here, our cost per pupil is about $16,554 compared to the rest of the schools in Erie County, which are a little bit over 18000 and then you can see all uh, New York City school districts um, were considerably below the $23,468 that is being spent um, across the state. So again, we really think that, you know, we're, we're getting a lot for the money that we're spending. You know, our kids are doing well. There's a lot of opportunities and programs that are available for them. And that is uh, continuously changing based on new needs and interests. And so our, our administrators and our teachers do a really fantastic job creating new opportunities. Uh, it's interesting for them. So the budget resolution would read um, actually $43,802,762 uh, by adjusting the, um, the levy. And uh, again, we are also have a second proposition to use $75,000 from the uh, technology reserve uh, to support the replacement of, of, of Chromebooks at uh, fifth and ninth grade. <coughs> And that's about it. Here we are, April 19th, uh, goes by quickly. Uh, there's some things that uh, the business office and Ms. George has to do between now and our next meeting on May 3rd, and then we vote um, on May 16th. Any questions? Questions? And the rest for the adjustments, could we make the adjustments to just get to post for the meeting? Sure. Make sure we get the... So before we, uh, we post it, we'll definitely change all that. Will there be, um, similar to what we did for the capital funds project, where there was a like a community forum that we work, is there a way for the community to ask more? Like, let's say they, they we approve this, and then they're like, oh, I have a question about that. Who, what do they do? Sure. They could come to the board meeting on, on May 3rd. You know, that would okay. probably be the best way to, to address the board. Uh, so if they could come and they want to uh, share during... Uh, public comment, 
they could ask any questions they want or any points of clarification of that. Okay. That's the, the hearing. Yeah, this hearing, hearing too. Right. Right. Yeah, thank no. you. Thank you. Yeah. The comment so period the specifically for, for that. For that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Question? Comments? Thank you very much. All right. Uh, moving on to item B, the capital facilities project. Yeah, so we, we continue to meet with our architects and engineers um, as the project's moving forward. Uh, we are starting to make some decisions around um, this building in terms of phase one and, and our need to uh, make the submittals in time so that we can get the data and that we can start construction in the spring of next year. So um, I asked, um, so the business office will be sending along the long-term plan and how that's being adjusted to you after every one of our meetings. So you'll receive this, um, the whole board will receive this, um, yeah, so that you can kind of monitor it as it goes along because it does, it does, there are adjustments. You know, every time we meet, um, things kind of happen or don't, they get delayed. Um, rarely do they move forward more quickly. Um, but uh, so those things do, do impact uh, what we're doing. Right now, we see a delay in the approval process, and so that's a little unfortunate, but we, we're ahead of it. And you know, we've been working closely with the team, and they've done a really excellent job of bringing samples in and preparing different um, um, like uh, uh, options for us to select. So we've been working through that process because we're gonna be working on the classrooms here uh, in the middle school, as well as the, uh, the restrooms. Uh, in, in the rest of the entire building. So that'll be done um, uh, next spring and summer. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, we're also planning then the next part of the process will be, we actually, believe it or not, have to start planning this summer uh, for the, the 25, uh, 2025, summer of 2025, because there's a lot of um, adjustments and like this, this, this area right here will be completely. So there's a lot of construction that will actually be happening in the second phase of this. And so we're really starting to talk about that now, what it will look like, actually working with the um, library media specialists to get their input on how this space should be reconstructed. And that will actually be happening this June before they leave for the summer. Um, so uh, we're also looking at a um, plan for pre-K. Uh, what does that look like long term in terms of creating a, a K pre-K wing uh, that's appropriate for, for all of our students? You know, pre-K programs are absolutely fantastic, um, but we move very quickly. And so adjusting to very little, very young, small students, uh, it, there's a lot to it, and we want to make sure that they have the proper facilities and the proper uh, supports and supplies. Uh, so we're working with, through that process right now. I'm going to be meeting with Ms. George and Ms. Ritzloff. Um, uh, let's see what else is going to be. All the teachers in pre-K uh, and, uh, and uh, kindergarten, as well as Ms. Pantoa. Uh, Mrs. Parker will be with us as well. So to talk about how does that transition look right now in the immediate future, as well as you know one to three to five years down the road. Um, so that's some of the things that we're talking about, um, Mr. Brunson. I know you wanted to add. Well, no, no, I think you covered it pretty well. I, I just for for those who are, are seeing this thing for the first time or 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 not sure they saw it before, uh, I just point out that that the uh, the long column under 2022 is the current project. And the long column at the end that says 2025 are all things that are not funded, but that may be needed in the future. So so it's even, even so the well, this column that says 2022 consists of all the things that will be done over a two or three year period of construction uh, ending into 2025. But the but the 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 list of projects on the right are all things that are uh, considered important, but haven't yet been uh, determined as to how they might be funded. And if you look at those two numbers, we have our project currently is just a little bit over twenty-two million dollars, and the needs that we weren't able to meet are nineteen million. So yeah. <laughs> it's a never-ending so never cycle. So, and I'm sure that number nineteen million will grow over the next three to five years. So, you know, we're just trying to be prepared, looking down the road, like what we need to do to save and those kind of things. Some of those things may get may get done uh, if if they rise to an emergency situation through the repair reserve. Or, or redirecting funds that were intended for something else. So uh, there are uh, fl there's flexibility for for dealing with important issues that arise. That, uh, uh, but it's really good that they have uh, examined all these spaces and all this equipment, and they've determined 
uh, what sorts of things we might want to plan for down the road uh, as we as we move on. Because as we retire debt, the prudent thing to do is to uh, keep the facilities in good condition. It's one of the very few ways that we can increase our state aid. Uh, we don't we we can lobby to try to get them to send us more aid. But if if we do a, a, a wonderful uh, facility for universal pay, we will receive two thirds of the cost of that uh, back from the state. So the uh, uh, and without the need to uh, change the legislation or or convince the. Uh, our elected representatives that they should pull out a little bit more money. So, so I think we have we've we've got a good process for analyzing needs and then uh, in a uh, a planned, thoughtful way, preparing to do it in the most fiscally responsible way as the years progress. Thank you, Mr. Rutten. Utilizing the state aid is essential. Planning ahead is essential, and I think it will also be helpful. As we as we look ahead, it's very nice to have it in a grid instead of just sort of out there in the void. Um, we, we can also watch how the, the the things that might seem small and inconsequential suddenly become an entire capital project, and the costs will only escalate. So sure. Well, you know this this reminds me of the fiscal one we get from yeah. Mr. Bambretti uh, and uh, George uh, on a regular basis and it's just it's just great as a board member to be able to see a, a picture on a single page that gives you a, uh, a, a feeling for uh, an important aspect of the program and how it's progressed. Um, did they say what the turnaround time is? You said it's a little bit delayed in terms of. Looks like um, fourteen weeks, sixteen weeks. Yeah, it keeps going up a couple of weeks at a time. Uh, so it's you know three to four months, four and a half months. So um, we we dealt with a lot worse than that in the past, but it was. Um, Geez, it was like six weeks at one time, <laughs> then it's 10, and now it's 14, now it's 16. So it does creep up. And, and the problem is, is they continue to seem to lose people who are doing the evaluations and also the expedited process that they used to offer to district people. So that has all impacted the, the turnaround time. So at this point in time, it's still on so schedule. The, the, uh, uh, so they're, they're intending to be, make their submittals in June, I believe. Uh, and uh, if unless it has significantly deteriorated since then, we should be able to go out and get, uh, uh, in the uh, late fall or early. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. That's great, and that still gives you leeway. Mm -hmm. that's great. Thank you. Any other questions? Moving on to item twelve, is there anyone who wishes to remove a consensus item from the consent agenda? Hearing none, they have a motion to approve the consensus item. So moved. Moved by Mr. Blower. Second. Seconded by Mr. Brunson. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Carried 6 0. <coughs> I'm going to make them wait 30 seconds. Thank you all yeah. for being here. You're welcome to escape. Your hour is up. <laughs> I didn't even know they were here. I'll report that. No, they were fascinated by the mushrooms. I was watching an episode of Barney Miller. And oh my gosh. The, the administrator of the Rikers Island prison in New York decided it was too crowded. <laughs> A couple of hundred prisoners. <laughs> it's a similar thing. You guys can all go now. Pretty Miller, right? Al Linden, what a guy. Put it out as a song and dance man. You know, plays the. Broadway music, but as Barney Miller, he was a great forward, good leader. 
That's the Kepler outlay. Yeah. Then I got to the pen. Mm -hmm. He's still alive, too. He's about 90 years old. Did he see him? Okay. It's all, it's all in there. Oh, great. So I, sorry, I thought it was two things, but it's only one thing. Oh, Sean, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> one left. <laughs> Wondering if I was going to get a seat today. <laughs> you can spread out. All right. Item 13, items recording board action. Item A, the superintendent recommends that the Board of Education adopts the resolution approving the 2023 2024 32 administrative budget as detailed in your attachment. Moved by Mr. Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Flowers. Discussion? Nothing this year, Dan? All right. All those oh, I think it's all, it's all answered <laughs> right here. Yes. The, everything you want to know about the BOCES administrative budget, right there. Right there. And that shiny, hefty. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions carried 6 0. Item B the superintendent recommends the Board of Education. Sorry. Just one vote for each of the. Individuals listed to fill the five vacancies on the Erie to Chautauqua Cataraugus vote as listed in your agenda. Seconded Second by Mrs. Daniel. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstentions? Carried 6 0. I can see the superintendent recommends that the Board of Education nominate David Lowry as a candidate to appear in the the candidate for the position of NISPA Area 1, Area 1 Director as detailed in your agenda. Almost. Moved by Mr. Munson. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Flowers. Discussion? Hardworking gentleman. He's a hardworking yeah. gentleman and yes, I thank him for his continued service and stepping it up to the very next level. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Carried 6-0. Item D, the superintendent recommends the Board of Education perform a first reading to adopt the policies collectively known as EA 6000, supplanting the current section 7000 of the existing policy manual as detailed in your agenda. So moved, so moved. moved by Mrs. Daniels. Second. Seconded by Mr. Cassidy. Discussion? Well, I mean, congratulations to Mr. Membretti and the policy committee for this, uh, this is monumental work. Uh, I know because I did it once 25 years ago. And it was a lot of work then and it's a lot of work now. So. Thank you for your recognition, Mr. Brunson. You are absolutely correct. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Membretti is doing an enormously heavy lift on behalf of the district. Um, and there's a lot of engagement all the way around. So thank you. That was like 160 pages this one. Is that what it was? 130. Felt like 160. I think, <laughs> I I think well. Pat's on the back to the board members. Yeah, that was my Easter reading. There <laughs> hundred and some pages. I appreciate yeah. that there were the, the highlights, though, the colored highlights. That was really helpful. Yeah. So thank you for that. Yes. Mr. Membretti is doing a, 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 a lion's share of the, the, he's doing the work and also helping us through the process. Right. Very nice. Um, it's very easy to follow what the changes are. Thank you all. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Period 6 0. Item D the superintendent recommends that the Board of Education perform a first reading to retire the policies collectively known as the current Section 7000 of the policy manual as listed in your agenda. Almost. Moved by Mr. Brunson. Second. Seconded by Mr. Cassidy. Don't fight over there. <laughs> Discussion? No, just briefly, I, I, I would just like to acknowledge the hard work of past superintendents and past administrators and past board members in writing these ones that were retiring. Uh, they, they, there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that went into many of these policies. They, they weren't all uh, easy adopts. They, there were some controversial issues. And they, they had to take a lot of time and discussion and compromise uh, to, to reach consensus to uh, approve these. And so uh, as we bury them, uh, I, I send out my acknowledgment to those who, who wrote them 
uh, initial visit. Thank you, Mr. Brunson. I think that's a fine acknowledgement of the history, the recognition that the work that the policy committee is doing now to bring the policies up to date is essential moving forward, but certainly all the things that have led to this to district success over the past decades have come from the policy work that was done in the past. Thank you. Thank you for your work. Yeah, and I would say, too, um, just running around those same things, is they, they gave us a starting point. Yeah, so a lot of things, yeah. you know, were pulled from this and then adjusted and modified to meet the current requirements and things like that. But you're right, it's... Oh, it's you know, important work to do less, it. It was less yeah. technology. You know, a lot of that was handwritten and <laughs> done on a, uh, on a typewriter and computer, so... We're processors. Yes, we're, we're processors. We're lucky. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Carried 6 0. Item F The superintendent recommends that the Board of Education approve the appointment of Amber Freak, a 1.0 FTE school nurse, as detailed in your agenda. May I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Improta, seconded by Mr. Cassidy. Discussion? All those well, just an acknowledgement again for. for uh, the adjustments that the board made and the administration made in, in the contractual language in order to uh, get good recruits and be able to fill these positions. Mm -hmm. really All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Carried 6-0. Item F, the superintendent recommends the Board of Education accept the New York State Child Nutrition Audit and Corrective Action Plan as detailed in your attachment. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Second by Mrs. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Carried 6 0. Item H. The superintendent recommends the Board of Education approve the contract between Buffalo Construction Consultants and the East Aurora Union Free School District for the services performed for the 2022 Capital Improvement Project. We have a motion. Moved by Mr. Cassidy. Okay. Seconded by Mr. Brunson. Discussion? This is all reviewed by our attorneys. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Daniel. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions carried 6 0. May I have a motion to approve? Oh, you may. may I have a motion to approve the resolution dated April 19, 2023, declaring the district's proposed capital outlay project. The type two action under seeker as detailed in your agenda. So moved. Cassidy. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Daniel. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Carried 6 0. Item K. The superintendent recommends that the Board of Education adopt. Superintendent recommends that the Board of Education adopt the 2023-2024 proposed general fund budget in the amount of $43,802,762 and the property tax report card as detailed in the attachment and as modified. So moved. Moved by Mr. Blowers. Second. Seconded by Mr. Brunson. Discussion? Thank you for your ongoing hard work. Thank you, sir. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Carried 6 0. Is there any new business to come before the board? What in the world? <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. All right then. <laughs> Item 15. The next regularly scheduled board meeting and it includes the budget public hearing. Thank you, Mrs. Improta. That is Wednesday, May 3rd, uh, right here in the middle school. Then another meeting on Wednesday. No, that is Tuesday. 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 Yep. Tuesday. Thank you. Tuesday, May sixteenth, which is also the election and budget vote. Polls are open all the live long day on the sixteenth. Other conferences and workshops are listed in your agenda. Is there anyone who wishes to add anything to a future agenda? Or any other business to come before the board? You have one comment on B. Absolutely. Depending on the outcome of the election, I'm kind of, I am interested in that leadership and education event in July. The agenda is really good and really appropriate and timely, but I'll let you know after May sometime. Thank you very much. Yeah, great. Uh, we've, Ms. Casey and I exchanged messages about those um, NISBA events, so you can send 
your request to register. There we go. Motion followed. Mm -hmm. so may I have a motion to adjourn? Someone, so, by Mrs. Daniels, second of it. Discussion. Aye. Aye. Good job, team. Aye. 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 Aye.